Hey guys, we are going to be checking out Vector P today. It is just like Photo P by the same creator and everything, but it is good for logos and vectored graphics. So without further ado, let's get started. So I've actually never used this program before, so this is going to be new for me, but we're going to try to see what we can do in Vector P and see how much different it actually is than Photo P. So start out by going to vectorp.com right here, and it looks just like Photo P. We're going to click new project to start a new project, and it looks the exact same. Dimensions, we're going to leave the same, and then we're just going to click create. So first things first, all the tools are still on the left side of the screen. Everything looks about the same, but I will say there are less tools than in Photo P. So first, we're going to be starting out with the essential vector tools. So the first one we got here is the pen tool, which is the most essential tool in the software. You're going to be using this the majority of the time. You can use it to create custom shapes and paths. Next, we got the shape tool over here. You can use this to draw rectangles, ellipses, polygons, and other shapes by right clicking it right here. And then we got the path selection tool right here, which you can select and modify paths or anchor points. So for example, if you use the pen tool, you can adjust all these with this. And then we got the classic move tool, which you guys already know what that does. You can move shapes, paths, and layers with it. So we're going to start out by creating a shape. So go ahead and click on the shape tool over here, or you could press U on your keyboard. And choose the shape that you want to use. I'm going to choose the rectangle. Now click anywhere on your canvas and drag to draw your shape. Up here you can customize the fill color. As well as the stroke. If you don't want a stroke, click that X. If you do want a stroke, then put a color in there. And you can adjust the size of the stroke with this. Which I don't have one right now. Now if you want to change the color of the stroke, just click on this box here. Or click on this box down here. And change it to whatever you want. Right here, you can adjust if it's dashed, dotted, or just a solid line, as well as round off corners and whatnot. So that's pretty much how you use the shape tool. So let's move on to the pen tool. The pen tool is over here, or you can click P on your keyboard and it will select the pen tool. Now this is great for custom shapes and paths. So we'll go ahead and start right now. So click on the canvas to create an anchor point for straight lines. Every time you click, it'll be a straight line. Or you can click and drag to create curved ones. And you can close the shape by selecting the first anchor point that you made. Now here's a little tip. You can actually use the direct selection tool right here or A on your keyboard to adjust the individual anchor points or curves. Now, if you want to adjust the size of this, you can go to your move tool right here or press V on your keyboard and you can select one of these boxes and drag or hold shift to stretch it. Okay, so here's a few tips and tricks before the end of the video. You can use Control Z to undo and Control Shift and Z to redo. Also, you can right click on these tools on the left to get more options. Okay, now let's say we're ready to export our project. Go up here to File, Export As, and SVG. Then you can export it as a scalable vector file so it won't lose quality when you scale it up and down. You can choose other formats here like JPEG or PNG, but I'm going to go with SVG. Here's a bunch of other options you can select as well. Then click save and it should download right up here. I would definitely say that this does need some more features to be fully complete, but at the same time it is in beta. So definitely stay updated on this guys. I think this will be a really useful tool once it's uh, more complete, but it's a great start and I'm really happy that this guy's making this because you can't do everything in Photopea. When it comes to logos, you want it to be vectored so you can scale it up and down without losing quality. That's kind of where this stands out. This is the Illustrator clone, whereas Photopea is the Photoshop clone. They both have their spots here in the design world. That's going to be the end of the video, guys. I hope now you can create something in Vector-P and you learn some of the basics. Definitely stay updated on the software. I think it has a ton of potential. And that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you have a good one. Peace.